the heck is this? American rice whiskey? In the immortal words of Arnold from A Different Strokes, what you talking about, Malik? Is it a gimmick? Is it really good? Is it worth paying attention to? Stay tuned and find out. Hello and welcome back to Drams for Dummies. My name is Brett, the numero uno dummy, and I'm excited to bring you a, a new bottle to me and probably maybe a new bottle to you as well today. Um, I am finding that uh, if you saw my two videos, do not overpay for any Buffalo Trace or anything else or whatever I call them that I'm really locking into this idea that, that there's really nothing worth overpaying for. And more than that, the legacy distillers are doing great things, but we kind of all know what they make and we kind of all know those profiles. And I've even had some people comment on my videos that they get kind of bored or they're not inspired by anything that they're drinking. It all tastes the same. And there's lots of ways to kind of get around that and mash bills and proofs and whatever. But one thing for sure is to go find something new that you've never had before that's not from one of the big distilleries. You know, look on your shelves wherever you're wherever you're shopping and living, look for those regional and those local producers that have limited distribution that are doing they're putting their, you know, heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears into bottles and not getting a lot of love, they need the support. And they're sure as heck not charging over suggested retail price, probably charging a pretty darn fair price. And you know where that money's going. It's going back to the families and the, and the small groups of people that are making them. For example, JT Mellick, You've made, if you're in the world and you watch the channels and you, you read the reviews, I, you've probably heard or seen JT Mellick. I mean, it's one of those things that they're, they're getting a lot of good buzz. And I had never seen, they are not distributed here in Kansas City. I looked and on a cursory look, and this could be absolutely wrong at this point, I know that they're limited production. They're, they're out of Louisiana. So they have Louisiana distribution. Looks like they have Texas distribution. Looks like they have Arkansas distribution. That seems to be the only place you're gonna see them in the stores, but you can get them online. You can go on their website, click, takes you to Bourbon Outfitters is where they're, they're connected to and get them online probably where I got this bottle. I saw that they, you know, I'd heard about their unique bottles. Uh, they do a rice whiskey, more about that in a second. But then when I saw they're coming out with a high proof version, I was like, well, I'm a proof whore. So I gotta go for this high proof whiskey, right? So basically, look at that cool label, first of all. Um, you've got JT Mellick, Louisiana, proudly on there, 118 proof. Their stuff is at least four years old. They batch everything. They, they, I think they say it's a, a near five-year-old usually. And it is. It's 100% rice whiskey. What? Rice whiskey. I mean, first of all, the reason I had to get it is because I've heard good things. The next reason I had to get it was I've never had rice whiskey. I've had rice wine. I've had sake. I've had different things made from rice. But... The idea of a rice whiskey in this American whiskey bourbon world we live in, it kind of seems, it just seems so foreign, right? It seems kind of sacrilegious almost, like that's not what you make whiskey out of. How could it be so, look at the color and how could it, how could it taste right or whatever? And I don't know the answer to that because I've never had it. So I was curious to get this. The story behind this, again, when you deal with the small distilleries, um, you get cool stories, you get cool tradition and background um, and history. And JT Mellick was the original owner of this 20 acre farm in Louisiana and, and, and planted and, and, and did rice, that was his crop. And then five generations later, the family is still on the same 20 acres doing, still doing the same rice. They also now do crawfish, they raise crawfish, which is where the, the, that comes into the label. It makes a super cool label. There's kind of like a reflectiveness to it, if you can kind of see that. Um, really cool label. Um, and they do uh, rice, they do a vodka, and now they do, a, they do a whiskey as well. So I'm super curious. Have you ever had rice whiskey? Have you ever had JT Mellick? Put your comments below. What do you think? What are your tasting notes for rice whiskey? Or specifically JT Mellick? Or specifically JT Mellick's high proof, 118 proof, a uh, small batch whiskey, which we're going to try right now. You know I'm not good with the tasting notes, 
So I don't know what you're going to get out of this from me other than you're going to share with me uh, this new bottle and this new experience. And if you haven't had it, maybe you'll go, depending on what I say, you might go, ooh, I need to go to JT Mellick's website and pick this up. And maybe you go, nah, doesn't sound like it's my thing. <laughs> Let's see. All right. It's a super bright nose. It's spicy. There's a little bit of fruitiness in there, but it definitely, so, uh, I mean, again, me being ignorant, and, and I don't know if you think the same thing, but, like, you're like, is it going to be completely different than what I'm used to? Is it going to taste like, I don't know, whatever you think it might taste like? Um, it... it <sighs> It's every bit of an, of, a, of an awesome um, American whiskey, almost bourbon nose. I would say that it has, it to me, puts off a lot of rye vibes. So if you're into that kind of minty dilliness, a little bit of a floral quality to it, a brightness, a fruitiness, but still, it, and how do I describe this? It kind of has a creaminess to it. It sort of has a smoothness to it while still being really bright and kind of punchy. Let me take a little drink. I, I'm liking the nose so far. It's fun. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful spring day here in Kansas City. We've had some kind of cruddy, rainy, cool weather. This is the kind of drink that you, you want to drink on a warm day, right? This is the one that this makes you think about sunshine. I'm liking this. Let's see what the first taste is like. Cheers, everybody. Whew. Um, okay. I haven't had much to drink today. I mean, or any, anything. I had a little Evan, Evan Black, a little swirl. It got in there. It started firing on all cylinders right out of the, right out of the chute. Kicking and punching and wanting, and, and wanting to do some, and doing some things. Um, you know, I haven't read a lot of reviews on this particular. I don't. I don't like to read and get a lot of tasty notes in my head before. I, but I have read enough when you kind of read in general the general synopsis of 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 things. They talk about smooth and easy, and I wouldn't put this in smooth and easy. I, I, um, that you know, maybe like their small, their regular small batch, which is like in the '80s proof, '86 proof, maybe I saw. Um, maybe it's got that more smooth and, and creaminess to it. This is punching bright and spicy to me. But again, the drink will always kind of inform the nose, right? So it's like hard, you don't want to you don't want to score the nose on its first pass, you know, because you want to kind of. And I've been known to do that, but I feel like when you take a drink and come back, the nose starts to they start to play together, right? So let me. There's a smokiness to it. Hmm. There's a little bit of that caramel in there, but again, I would say that this is leaning more to that rye side. If you're a spicy rye light lover, that punchy, that real energetic nose, um, I think you're going to really like this a lot. It's good. It's 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 not. Um, it's 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 well put together. It seems to make sense and be coherent. It's not like it's just, you know, I kind of thought, oh, rice whiskey, right? It's going to be, it's going to feel, I don't know, amateur, weird, jagged, different. I don't know. I don't know what I thought, but it definitely comes together and feels very solid and right. And yeah, and it's got a lot of sweet in there. The, the peppery spice that was coming in before the pot, before the drink has sort of mellowed now, which is nice. So again, my personal preference, and I had someone in comments talk about how all of us, he, he lumped me in with the whiskey tubers, which is great. What a great compliment that was. But that our scales all, we're all sevens and eights and everything. It's, it, and my argument to that is we drink good crap, you know? So like, this is a great brand. This is getting good love. So it would be weird if I was like, it's a four, it's a five. Like, why be a dick? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. 
But it, it, every preference, every palate is different too. So what? How does it hit your palate? What do you love, not love? The the brightness, the thinness, a little bit. I'm, I, again, it's well rounded, but a little bit of that just bright, lively energy I like, and it's fun. But for me personally, I like a little bit more depth in the in in my nose. It's fun though. It is fun. Um, it's a little different every time. It's good. I'm gonna go 7.5. I, I, I'm thinking about that commenter. I'm like, I should be meaner, but I, it, it's good. I like it. I, it. It's better than good. It's not great, but it's in that space, right? So that would be, I don't have Matt Porter's list up in front of me, right? But that's that slots right in there. That is a peppery, zingy booger, man. I'm gonna take another drink to get a full score on this, but that spice might be a little overwhelming for me. Let me see. Okay. It's rounding out now. It could be that it drinks hotter than 118, and it's kind of the first real drink I've had today. So that first drink or two was really, really getting me, which is rare. I mean, usually I'm not that that wussy on that stuff. But the last drink or two, it wasn't just fire and all spice, all the spice receptors at, at once. It's still there. It's I think the spice and maybe the youngness. Maybe it's a rice thing. I can't tell you. I can't compare to other rice experiences. But that kind of that kind of rice, or that's rice, that spicy, young thinness. Some of those experiences are still kind of the the prevalent ones. Where then that 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 smooth and sweet and creamy kind of some of that is happening in the palate as well in the finish. But it sort of feels like it's underneath this spicy sort of punchy layer, which again, if you're like into if you're into high proof, spicy high rye stuff, um, this I think is going to be your jam 100%. Um, if you want, if you're thinking, hey man, for summertime I like a a, a punchy, bright, fun, lively drink uh, in the glass versus that wintertime kind of sit around the campfire, smooth, rich calming you want a lively bright energetic drink this is this is right up your alley for me personally i feel like i'm gonna go 6.5 the finish is a little comes back a little bit more and then that sizzle is definitely there in the in the in the finish um and i like that i'm gonna go seven so you know this would be a seven bottle for me which is a solid, solid bottle. Again, I, I mean, for for so many reasons, I would say if you're watching this and going, should I? Am I? If if at this point you're at the end and you're still kind of, yeah, go ahead, man. Like this was, I think, fifty maybe. So you talk about ten. If you're talking about ten dollars per year, this is almost five years. So you're good there. If you're talking about buying something to say to have something you never had before. That's worth money, right? That's worth an experience. Um, if you want to say you want to, you're trying to spend your money and support the little guy. This one, this is like literally you can't be more farm to glass, right? They grow it, they harvest it, they distill it, they they age it, and they bottle it on their farm. Like how cool is that? So, for all reasons, like I almost like would want to get like a, another point of just being cool, a point of of supporting the little guy doing things well you if you've seen me talk doing my blind barrels reviews i don't always like fall over backwards for everything that that, that gets sent to me from blind barrels but i universally appreciate that i get new things i and i have new flavor profiles that i'm not used to and sometimes they don't hit me all the way the way i want them to because and sometimes because we're just so we're so trained by these legacy uh, you know uh palettes and 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 
uh, profiles that we anything different kind of is off-putting at first. We almost have to get used to a new thing, right? And so for all reasons, for, for my new mission of don't overpay for something, support the little guy, um, support people who are doing it different and trying new things and, and having the guts and stones to do that, JT Mellick checks those boxes. So it's a seven for me. That would not be a top shelf, but to have it on the shelf as a cool looking bottle, to have it on the shelf to, to tell people about, man, this is, have you ever had rice, rice whiskey before? Have you ever had American, Louisiana rice whiskey? And then tell their story. That's part of what we do with this, right? It's the sharing of the experience with our friends and our family. And so if they're, if the, again, that's where the plus one would come from almost. Maybe the plus 1.5, make it a top shelf because it's just got all those things in spades. So check out JT Mellick. They're doing something awesome. I enjoyed it. Thank you guys for being here for this quick little bottle. Click subscribe, like, share it with your friends, whichever direction they are. Uh, think about being a patron. We're building that community slowly but surely. Uh, and we are at this moment at 99 subscribers by the time you're watching it hopefully we're over 100 and if that's the case then we are uh scheduling our first uh live uh episode with all of our subscribers invited to, to jump on and 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 put in their two cents so we're doing good things here we're slowly building it but we need you guys to 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 keep us going so subscribe be a patron share it with your friends leave a nice comment or not Whatever you want to do, love you guys. As long as what you're doing is partly that, supporting this dummy community and all the things we're doing. Talk to you guys later. See you soon.